Okay, now we're going to talk about electric motor fundamentals. Why do we talk about electric motors? Because they're in every building. <laughs> they consume about 60% of the energy in most buildings. So just quickly, we're going to go through a couple of overview points, talking about what the motor is made of. First of all, this is basically taking electric energy coming into this thing. And notice a lot of time it's three phase. We'll get to that in a few minutes. This motor is a device that has magnets in it. And what is going on is you have uh, some of the magnets are in the stator, and then you have this thing called the rotor, which is rotating them. And basically, you're taking electric energy in a sine wave and converting it into magnetic energy to turn this rotor. Now, some of the characteristics of the motor are listed over here on the left-hand side. And we're going to go through those one by one. We're actually going to do it on an actual nameplate. So this is a nameplate of a motor, and you can see some of the things that I mentioned. This is the size of the motor. This is the RPM, so you can see voltage. You can see service factor. We're going to go through all these terms in a minute. Uh, some other things, types of design, maximum KVAR, et cetera. So know that you can find these things on the nameplate. Most of the time, the nameplates are embossed because they often get painted. Or there can be grease or dirt, and the embossing helps you see the numbers on the motor. And so here are the terms on the left-hand side. And the horsepower is basically the size of the motor. What is the motor capable of doing? It's like having a large motor. It doesn't mean it's consuming you know, 100 horsepower all the time, but it's capable of doing so. The next concept is the no-load RPM. And sometimes I like to do this with an analogy of a bicycle. So if you could imagine you're riding your bicycle on flat ground, there would be a point where you cannot rotate your legs any faster. You're just going as fast as you can on flat ground. That would be analogous to a motor running at no load. A motor, again, is a series of magnets and electric coils. You power the coils, and basically the motor spins like the world's dumbest hamster. It just tries to go as fast as it can. And this is what would be happening for you on no-load RPM on flat ground on a bicycle. When you start going up a hill, your rotations on your sprocket are going to slow down, and that's exactly what's going to happen in a motor. So we have this term called full-load RPM, which is telling you how much the motor is actually slowing down when it's going up a full load or me meeting its full capacity as far as shaft horsepower output. One other concept to get is called locked rotor amps. And that would be the situation where you're going up a hill and say you stop halfway, this is you on your bicycle, and to get momentum to go up the hill again, you'd have to put all of your weight on one of the sprockets to get your bicycle to go up the hill. This is a terrible drawing of a bicycle, but maybe you can imagine the bicycle's coming at you out of the page. You'd have to put all of your weight on one of your legs to get that bike to get some momentum to start to go up the hill. And that would be analogous to locked rotor amps. What they actually do is they lock the motor off, they lock the shaft off, and then they plug it in and turn it on. And this is a very, very high amp draw, uh, maybe for a second or less, but it basically is what's needed to get the motor to get started. Now another key principle to get across is the importance of three-phase motors. And so if you could imagine the sprocket being blown up, this is the sprocket, this is basically one of the pedals or shafts, and this is one pedal here, and this is another pedal. In a bicycle, you'd have two pedals. But if you can imagine a motor with three phase, it would be like having a bicycle sprocket with three pedals. Okay, And the reason they do that, and this is really weird to draw, but the reason they do that is you're trying to rotate this thing down. With a three-phase motor and three-phase um, electric coming in there, you're always going to have you know, one pedal on the downstroke. So you're always going to have good torque to make that rotation and get the motor started. Okay, now just a couple more concepts. One of them is maximum capacitor size. Remember when we were talking about power factor in an earlier module? Whenever you have an induction motor or some type of magnet, your power factor uh, is going to be lagging. And basically this angle is going to be getting larger and larger if you have more and more magnets uh, that are messing with messing around with your electric power. So what they do in motors is they already know in the lab, you know, how much a motor is going to mess up the electric power quality. And so they tell you on the motor, and you can see this right here, where they're telling you what the maximum size capacitor you would need to put on that motor to correct the power factor back to a reasonable number. Okay, So that's what that is. Service factor is even easier. That's basically another way to say that would be overload factor. That means you can run a motor overloaded, you know, a certain percentage. So in this case, this motor has a service factor of 1.15, which means that it can be run 
115% of rated load. And different manufacturers have different you know, lengths of time you can do that, but most of them would say you can run it indefinitely 15% overloaded. If you go beyond that, you're going to heat up the motor and burn out the windings and then have a burned out motor. So those are some basic principles about motors, good things to know. That'll come in play in other sections of uh, your energy management career, but this is just some fundamentals and some analogies. Hopefully it helped you. We'll catch you next time.